sing glory to God today. Amen.
I believe anyone can do anything. If you rose Jesus from the dead, He can do anything. If He called Lazarus forth from the dead, He can do anything. Hallelujah. No matter what your problem, your situation is today, our God is mighty to save you. Hallelujah. He is mighty to save you. Amen. This, even though I know some of us are feeling a little bit sad today, but look at the name of the Lord in your sadness and in your situation that you bring us. Or maybe a, a financial problem, an unemployment problem, and then just look at the name of God. He can praise in your situation. And you will see what God will do. Hallelujah. Praise the name of God.
Because out of the family of eight, everybody come, they say, my heart, my heart, everything is horrible. But my mother said, I don't want to do but my mom, she does I love her mom because of that. She said, your handwriting is beautiful. Because my mother said so, I went to what else she was saying. So I love my mother because she just loves my handwriting. She says, beautiful. She says, I've got a doctor's handwriting. Ish, amen. So, but she loves it. Amen. Amen. May I greet all the elders in the house as well. We are blessed with your presence. And uh, we thank God for blessing us with beautiful Easter services. Let us pray before we read the word of the Lord. Lord Jesus, we thank you that we are reading your word this morning. I pray that your way may speak to us and find the space to place in our hearts and minds as we reflect about its meaning and implication in our lives. In Jesus' name we thank you. Amen. Amen. Uh, sometimes these days I've been watching one advert on television. You know, when you're waiting for the news, there's this advert that you just repeat, you know, over and over again. It's an advert of a, a lady called Zolam Kosi. She tells of the story that uh, during this COVID, while she was bored, you know, then she started to, to clean the house. She started to clean the house, to do spring cleaning. And then she discovered with her children, where they went through some boxes, the, the patterns of, of designs that she, she drew way, way back. While she had no children, she said, you know, I tell you to draw patterns for dresses, and then the children were asking, what are you going to do with these patterns now? She said, I'm going to do something about them. I want to, 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 to make a range of uh, potters, the plates, you know, with patterns, beautiful patterns. Some patterns are a woman, she said this for a queen, a lady, beautiful hairstyle, uh, afro hair, long dress, and then just different types of patterns, beautiful patterns that she she decided to, to make this range of, of plates, uh, of pottery, this design, beautiful designs. And then she says uh, in, in that advent, you know, I dream that one day the Zola Kosi designs, plates will be seen, and uh, it will be in a house in Nigeria, it will be in a house in Canada, in America, in Egypt, all over the world. She says, you know, families will gather and have family dinner and lunch and they'll be discussing the patterns, my patterns on their plates. Ish, can you say ish? Ish. Imagine families across the world looking at these patterns in these plates. And it's beautiful, beautiful patterns. Zola Mbosi design, beautiful. You know, power of design. It just begins in an individual, but it can have an impact in the lives of many people. Amen. The power of design, That's a beautiful pattern, can inspire other people, mm -hmm. can inspire, ignite, you know, some passion and commitment to other Power of design. Mm -hmm. Think about patterns during the season of Easter. You know, in the township, when people go to Easter services, they want to get the best clothes, you know. That has been the culture in the township. So my mom had a singer machine. And then uh, she was a domestic worker, but she used to do sewing to augment uh, her income. So towards Easter, you know, there will be little ladies coming at home asking my mom to, to sew dresses for them. And you know what was surprising for me? It all began with the cash, the paper pattern. It all began with the design. There will be papers at home, in the dining room, in the kitchen. She'll be cutting, you know, just a piece of papers everywhere. But out of those patterns, a beautiful dress, which can say amen. amen. For me, that was fascinating, you know, just papers everywhere. And she, she, she they know what they're talking about. Measurements, patterns, and a beautiful dress will be on the table. They will come and pick them up going for Easter service. The power of a design. Amen. Yeah. 
So I think this morning I'd like us to talk, to reflect, to think about what is the pattern of a Christian after resurrection? Sure. What is the pattern of a Christian life after the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ? Sure. What kind of a power of design that would emerge in a Christian life after Jesus has died and rose from the dead? When I read the scriptures, to me it talks about laying down your life for, for others. That is the design that is emerging, that is emanating from the scriptures. Let us read together in John chapter 21. This story, you can read the whole chapter, but I'm going to read John chapter 21, verses 15 to 17. But let me just uh, go to the first verse. Uh, lay down your life for others as a pattern, as a, as a power of design that must emerge after resurrection. John 21, let me just start from verse 21. Afterwards, Jesus appeared again to his disciples by the sea of Tiberias. It happened this way. Simon Peter, Thomas called Didymus, Nathaniel from Cana and Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two other disciples were together. I'm going out to fish, Simon Peter told them, and they said, we'll go with you. So they went out and got to the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Let's go down to verse 15. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me more than this? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Then let's go to 1 John, the, 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 you know, the letter of 1 John chapter 3, verse 16. The letter of 1 John chapter 3, verse 16. It read us, 1 John chapter 3, verse 16. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. Sure. This is the pattern, this is the design of a Christian life after resurrection. Hmm. This is the, the, the ideal, the climax of what a Christian must aim for after resurrection. You know, when you when we were born again, when you accept Christ as Lord and Savior, you don't just go through emotions. It's not just about going emotions or feeling good about yourself. When you, when you prepare for Easter, we spend 40 days before Easter, a period of land. We think, we reflect, we meditate, we prepare ourselves, you know, to be ready for, for the Easter services. We are not just going through emotions. Then after Easter, 40 days after Easter, it will be Ascension Day. We are not just going through emotions. Yeah. 50 days after Easter, it's a Pentecost. We are not just, you know, doing one thing after the other, just a repetitive you know, actions that Christians go through every day. After Easter, we are not just waiting for Jesus to come and take us home, you know. Mm -hmm. We are not just waiting, you know, right. you know idling around. Don't know, don't know what to do. We are just we don't know what to do. We have to just keep ourselves busy. Ish. Sure. We are not to just to keep ourselves busy until Jesus comes. Sure. Can you say ish? ish? You know, sometimes our young people think, what is happening in the church? Nothing is happening in the church. You know, after all, there is lockdown. So let's see what we can do just to keep busy. This scripture is taking us back. To the heart of the gospel, Amen. what Jesus understood, what must 
what's happening after this election. To us, yes, young people, old people, this is what Jesus is expecting from us. He says, he wants us to, to you know, to craft, to draw a, a new pattern, a design for our lives. He raised, he presented this issue to Peter in three questions. Peter, do you love me more than this? Yeah. Do you love me more than this? And Peter responded, he understood what Jesus meant. Then, in, in, in first John, uh, chapter 3, verse 16, I think he was reflecting about what Jesus asked him those three questions. This is how we know what love is. Jesus Christ laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. This is, what, this is the gist, the core of what Christian life is all about. Then I did some word study to look at these words that John used when he was describing uh, this pattern of a Christian life. I went to my Greek dictionary and looked at the word to lay down your life. What does it mean to lay down your life for others? If we have to, 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 you know, to draw a pattern of a life that is laid down for others, what kind of a pattern we you make? There's a, a word that really was fascinating that I found. Uh, Jesus Christ laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down, to lay down the Greek way that is used there. It means, it means tithing. This one, uh, what captured me most, firstly, it means to lay down, to put down a design of a mosaic. Sure. Can you say amen? amen. Put down, literally, lay down a design of a mosaic. A mosaic is a pattern mm. or a picture made by plastic, sort of by placing together small pieces of glass or stone of different colors. You know, like a, a, you know, an old pictures, the Roman patterns that we see, you know, beautiful mosaic or tiles. You take an individual piece of glass or stone and you lay it down. You create this beautiful pattern. That's what uh, the word kingdom means. John was saying, my understanding, when I reflected on this, the meaning of this word, John was saying to us, as Christians, we have to make an effort. We are called upon to lay down our lives, even on minute issues of our lives. Pieces of glass or stones must be laid down for the benefit of other people. You lay down your lives for others. You take those fragile, beautiful pieces that define who you are, that are part of your life. And if it means to be for the sake of the gospel, you lay them down for the sake of somebody else. Mm. Sure. And for me, when I read this, I was like, this, this is this is very challenging. Yeah. Because we want the best for ourselves. Yeah. Even to the minute details. We want beautiful things. Even the, the, the concept of a stone, you know, things that are very heavy, significant, they must all come our way. But John says, Jesus laid the soft and the hard core of his life for me and for you on the cross. That is the pattern that he plays before us. So this morning I want to challenge all of us. This scripture is challenging us. What kind of a pattern are you putting in place? Are you laying down for other people? What kind of a pattern? When you look at your life, what kind of a pattern is emerging out of your life? You know, 
if you're a young person, uh, you know, as young people, we are very sensitive about things that reflect directly on us, you know? Uh, I remember in my early teens at home, my father went to horses, you know, my father was selling fire, wood and coal, and you see what's the, the garage, you know, you see the garage in the township, yeah. that we are, so at home at Lamini, we're selling uh, wood and, and, and coal and, and, and having tents, so we can, for me, I, I don't know what we weekend was. From ten years of age, I was with my father in a village delivering wood uh, and coal in the township. After lunch, we go and pitch tents uh, when there are funerals or birthdays. You know? So, then during the day, during the week, uh, the horses were you know, at home at the, at, the, at the top of the garage. My father made a kind of a, 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 a proffer a prof for. for for the horses. So in the morning, he led them loose uh, to roam around the township. Late in the afternoon, one about four or five, we'll just go out and look for them. You don't know, we'll just, okay, this, today we start from this direction. <laughs> because my father left the horses here in the morning then. We'll start from this direction and we'll maybe walk around eight to ten kilometers and we'll find horses close towards the lands, uh, if you know, uh, so we Midway, from Soil to Midway, looking for horses. And then when we were coming, we were bringing horses back home, close to our township. In my early teens, eh, that was very difficult because, can you say ish? Because girls would be there playing in the streets. Ish. Girls would be there playing in the streets. And here I am, I'm just trying to walk, you know, with, with, with the sky behind the horse. Ish. And girls are just there, and that was the worst part for me. Like, you know, ish, they say ish. Just imagine, 14, 15 year old, and girls are watching you playing uh, uh, tennis or playing, you know, skipping outside in, in the streets. And you are just there trying to control this horse. And the horses are not, you know, the horse is not okay, let me just stop there. <laughs> Amen. So, for me, I was very conscious about, I wonder how these girls, how do they look at me? You know, ish, it's a ish, guys. Hunting. How do they look at me? What do they think? You know, that boy who runs around behind horses. Very concerned about how we represent ourselves. The petting. But Jesus is saying to us, there's a petting that I'm expecting from you. If there's anything that people must know about you, it is that you can lay down your life for the interests of other people. Sure. You can take things that are important to you, however small or precious, and if it means you have to sacrifice them, you will sacrifice them for the sake of others. And in my first year as a pastor at Jabahu, um, what you know, I used to preach and uh, sometimes uh, somebody gave me there are these things that you put here. What what are they? Cufflinks. Cufflinks. Say amen. amen. Somebody gave me cufflinks. They're beautiful golden cufflinks. Beautiful. Somebody gave me those cufflinks. So, you know, sometimes when I feel good, sadies, I just put on my shirt, a tie, and my cufflinks. You know, go and preach and each the church will be so excited. But then one granny in the church, there were either four grannies in my church, but one granny said to me, Muruti, can I see you after church? I said, okay, okay go, go. Then we had a talk. She said to me, Muruti, you bless me. Very blessed me. Your servants are very powerful, but they're blessing us. But Muruti, you know, these things that you are wearing, <laughs> <laughs> these things that you are wearing, they offend me. <laughs> And you say, Ish. <laughs> I'm preaching to prepare, you know, I started Greek, I even give, give, give terms in the pulpit, but Ish. Roti, these things. I said, okay, go, go, I understand you. That was the last time I preached. <laughs> Catholics. More beautiful things that, it was the best things I had in my world of those days. I have to sacrifice them because one old granny in the church 
will not go to heaven because of my coffee. <laughs> it's, it's a fish. The things that you sacrifice. I could have said, you know, let me just define in terms of theology. What? Ish. I could have just tried to educate here, but it just offended him. Those confidence. And her life was more important than my sense of looking beautiful before the church. So there are things that, you know, we are, we are we, we, we grab in a culture, we have to fight for what is ours, our rights. We have to fight for our human rights and liberation. We come from that struggle. But when we come to the word of God, we fight about protecting the other, not yourself. We fight that the other brother, the other sister must go to heaven rather than you. That's the pattern. That's the story of us. It contradicts the culture that we live in. The culture of what is mine, what is rightfully mine. So I pray that we may be a church that raises men and women, young people who know what it is to sacrifice for the sake of the gospel. We know what it is, you know, to do sometimes unpopular things for the sake of If God says so, I'm going to do it. Yeah, we don't have to go with the majority. Maybe. What other people are saying maybe. and listen to the voice of the Spirit. That's the, the pattern, the kind of a life that God is expecting from us. We know that Christ laid down his life for us. So we have to lay down our lives for others. The second picture that comes from this word, to lay down your life, it means to it's like you make a deposit in a bank. I was fascinated by the word back over and over to this word. Give them it means and you do an action as if you are putting a deposit in a bank. Applying this scripture in terms of this verse means, in my understanding, I have to make a deposit in your life. Yes. As a Christian, I'm expected to make a deposit in the lives of the people that I meet. Amen. To deposit you know, in, in, in their lives in terms of prayer and support, encouragement, going a second mind. What are you depositing in the lives of other people as you're sitting this morning? Mm -hmm. What deposit have you made this week to someone else? Sure. Or were you just going to the ATM of others and receiving? Sure. Ish. Did you say ish? You know, I wake up in the morning, go to the ATM, and withdraw. People must just give me. But what am I giving them? Sure. Sure. The kind of a Christian is the one who deposits in the lives of other people. Yeah. Yeah. I pray that we be a church that understands that, you know, what are we depositing to our community? Yes. Sure. The values, the standards. Yeah. What are we depositing in the lives of our community? Then the third concept, this way of you know, them, it means to lay down one's arms. For me, it, it was very powerful because the definition says, in terms of military application, when soldiers are going to attack, they are well armed, they are trained, they are armed to you know to the best of their abilities, but then. They, to, they get a command to stand at ease. Stand, you know, in the military, uh, attention, stand at ease, stand easy. You relax. We are not in a fighting mood. You know, move your arms, but you stand at ease. We are not, in a, we are not moving forward. Then, take them means you don't just stand at ease. But you lay down your lives, you're not fighting anymore. Sure. Sure. A pattern of a Christian life is not the one who's, who's on fighting mode. Mm. You're not fighting. 
God fights for you. Amen. Our culture says you must fight for his life for you. Mm. Jesus says, lay down your arms. Yeah. The battle is not yours for the Lord. Amen. It's quite difficult, no? Yeah. We are trained to fight, we are taught to fight our culture, our life, our constitution. So you must fight for your rights. Jesus says, why don't you lay down your rights for others? Lay down your arms to surrender. That is the pattern of a Christian. Uh, sometimes I think we, even if we are right, but sometimes it's okay for others to be correct. Amen? Even if you know that you are right, but to be correct, don't fight. There are things that are not worth fighting for. Yes, yes. There are things that are not worth fighting for. At home, in the church, in the community, the issue of life is more important than anything else. There are things that are not worth fighting for. So this is the pattern that is imagined. Things that are precious, significant to us, we are able to sacrifice for the benefit of others. We make an effort to make deposits, to deposit significance, purpose, meaning, but also material things in the lives of other people. When it comes to a push, it is God who must win rather than us. We are not going to, we are not going to, we are going to fight anymore. Then another concept that came to my mind that came as I was looking at this specific scripture. It means, Tidham, it means to consider one as not living. That was a tough one when I was just thinking yeah. about it. This is the, the pattern, the life that John was talking about, the standard that John was talking about. Consider, consider yourself dead. Amen. Come from church. When I leave this building, this, this building, I feel like I'm dead. I don't know my life. But Christ said it. I don't know my life, but Christ lives in me. Yeah. Mm, yes. Yeah. Amen. Consider yourself as if you're a living. I think this is contradicts everything that our culture tells us about what it means to be. So this morning, as we close the service, the word place this way in my heart to say to us as the children of God, as the family of God, we know what Jesus did and we have to do our part. This is how we know what love is. Jesus laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. Sure. Simon, son of John, do you truly love me more than this? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my hands. Simon, son of John, do you truly love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. At that time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was there because Jesus asked him at that time. Do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Let's do it out of love. This person, this, this pattern of placing ourselves down, we do it out of love of Jesus. This pattern of depositing in the life of others. We are not compared to force, it's out of love. Mm. This pattern, this pattern, this design of surrendering our rights, our privileges, our opinions, mm. our ideas, yeah. our point of, you know, yeah, surrendering what you know. We do it out of love, not because, you know, we are in front of waves. 
this act of living as in the of being prepared of understand that you are counting yourself as you are, you are, you are, you are dead. Counting yourself as dead. You do it out of love. That is the, that is the image, the pattern that I pray that it must be found, may be found in our own presence. As Zolan Bosi, this lady says, my pattern, I wish people can discuss about it in Nigeria, in Canada, in America, everywhere in the world, by designs. I pray that our pattern that Jesus is going to form in your life can be discussed anywhere, everywhere in the world. What kind of a pattern are you designing this morning? Lay down your life for others. What bless you? What kind of a pattern are we making with our lives? What deposits are we putting into the lives of those around us? These are questions that we really need to answer for ourselves, each one of us. Thank you, Dr. Nash. What a, what a great, great message we've heard this morning. I think there's no other way to end this morning's service but with amazing grace. Some of you, we sang earlier, we have to sing that again. Because this is amazing grace, that he should lay his life down for each one of us. And what more can we do than lay us down for those around us?
place that you have planted us, Lord, as we live out our lives before you, may the captain set me, Lord, lay down before you, pleasing to you, Lord Jesus. May we lay down our lives before those around us, Lord, for those around us. Have your way with each one of us, Lord. Pray your hand upon us, your blessing upon our homes, your blessing upon your church, Lord Jesus. Your holy and precious name. Amen. Two quick, three quick announcements. Wednesday evening, friends, we have a Bible study online. The link will go out on Wednesday morning. Please join us at 7 p.m. On Friday morning at 6 a.m. in the kitchen, the men will be meeting. You're welcome to come and join us for coffee and have a, a time of fellowship together with us. On Friday evening, it is youth at 7 a.m. in the hall. Youth at 7 in the hall on Friday evening. One last thing. Many of you will remember Randall, uh, Randall. <laughs> Wendell Woodley. Many of you will remember Wendell. Wendell was part of our church for a very long time. He left from here to go to, to America, to go to seminary, to get his master's degree. Wendell has written a devotional book. I have a few of them available for you if you would like to purchase one. It is excellent. Stefan Tilly wrote the, the foreword in it. Um, it's a 40-day devotional and really good to be, to be working with. If you would like one, you can come and speak to me there and arrange. Friends, as we go from here today, Let's go with that amazing grace that comes through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. With that unfailing love of God and with intimate fellowship of the Holy Spirit. May they be yours today, tomorrow, and absolutely forever in the wonderful name of Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Can we run that? Chorus again, please. My chains. <laughs> <laughs>